In the heart of Kenya, a critical biodiversity issue is unfolding. One that resonates far beyond its borders. Experts in conservation are sounding the alarm about the expanding infrastructure posing a grave threat to biodiversity. Among the most vulnerable are various bird species struggling to survive in the face of dangerous power lines. This issue is of paramount concern as Kenya lies on the migratory route of millions of birds. The rising cases of electrocution are causing widespread distress. Uh, energy, as you know, that Kenya is in the front line towards green growth and producing uh, 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 energy, uh, electricity for their citizens and connecting majority of the households within the country or with energy. However, we need to consider that this energy infrastructure, both transmission lines and uh, places for the power plants, need to consider and, um, uh, biodiversity within, within their development agenda whereby power lines and energy infrastructure need to be positioned in the correct places, uh, put appropriate mitigation measures uh, to avoid uh, and minimize losses on biodiversity or negative impacts on biodiversity, as well as uh, ensuring that the, there is overall net gain or something which is called net positive gain towards uh, uh, the development whereby there is restoration which is done, maintaining uh, uh, restoration which is done along the power lines, for example, or along the routes within 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 uh, where these power lines are move have, uh, have been uh, moving along, and also ensuring that these power lines are well designed to ensure that they minimize uh, losses on uh, on birds through collision and electrocution. So, like for the investment by like SGI, they tried as much as they could towards leaving migratory gaps for, for wildlife to move from the southern area to the northern side within, 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 um, uh, within that landscape. But overall they have seen or they have indicated that they might need more zones that this, these animals need to move through. There are provisions but more need to be done. So in this regard, if during the planning and uh, uh, during the planning of these investments if the interaction of the investor, the scientists, or the biodiversity, uh, and biodiversity people and the community are put together during the, what do you call them, like the feasibility stage, we can minimize this type of uh, negative impact on biodiversity. Because then we don't be, we don't be reactionary, rather than we do proper planning even before the investment comes on the ground. So, so all this need to come, you know, come to be within the investors, uh, within the government and the investors' uh, uh, scope uh, before the investment is actually placed on the ground. The global community is also deeply concerned because some of the affected species are on the red list of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN. This crisis transcends borders and calls for collective action. Small species here, it's a frog. This is an example from Tanzania. It's called the Kihansi spray toad. This frog was, um, was only found in one location within Tanzania, at the Kihansi waterfall, Gorge, where Tanzania got a loan from World Bank to construct a, a, a hydro dam within that landscape. And this frog went extinct in 2009, and they have been spending so much money to bring back this frog into that landscape. So World Bank, is, has given so much money to, to Tanzania to reintroduce this frog from zoos across the US, which had a breeding program for, for that frog to be brought back to the, Kihans, to, the, to the Kihansi Gorge. This just gives you the example that if we do not plan our investment correctly, we end up spending so much money mm -hmm. to try and safeguard or bring back this biodiversity. No country, even Kenya, wants to say that we have a species going extinct. It is our national pride. Now, infrastructure investors are being urged to explore wildlife-friendly technology solutions to protect not only birds but also other precious wildlife. And the key thing for this continent, Africa, is that we must develop. 
but our development must be done in a sustainable way. And history has taught us that where we don't have sustainability in development, then the effects on nature and on and the well-being of people are significantly impacted. Biodiversity conservation touches every aspect of life. Collaboration across borders is imperative to address this multifaceted challenge. The key of understanding that there are certain realities and certain limitations that we are going to have collectively. We collaborate on talking to our stakeholders and stakeholders that without resources, none of this makes any sense. But does it mean we don't do anything? Absolutely not. Fabric of life. We understand that collaborating with our neighbors, collaborating with the birds and bees and all the species around us, is, it keeps our survival. It's not that we're going to survive if we kill all the vultures because we've put up the wrong infrastructure. It's not that we're going to survive if we have irresponsible agricultural methods. This is a do or die, my friends. Extinction is forever. And the concern I have about humanity today, we keep talking about the extinction of other species. We never look at ourselves. Ata tabia inti itakuwa msuri kwa sababu mumepata sasa eh, indigenous asili. Mwenye atasema ukweli, mwenye anajua mambo ya kindani. Any person that wants to invest in a community must seek prior consent. Even us, we cannot do any community project without a prior consent. Community members must sign and agree us to work with them. So that prior consent must be respected by everybody, even the government. And we talked about that in terms of the SGR, how it was constructed, mainly focused on resource flow from the um, interior to the ports. But we need to consider decision making in ways that impact other, other aspects of um, society. Government making the right decision is important. Government creating space for civil society to contribute in decision making is important. Government providing the resources for conservation is important. And government providing the regulatory fr framework that would allow for engagement and for the right decisions to be made is important. So I think government's role is critical. They are the key stakeholders there, but they need to bring others involved um, to the space as well. Is that part of the requirement for licensing is also clearance from NEMA. So that's, that's where we begin. Uh, and then for mining companies, before we finally give, you, give a license, they have to uh, come up with an environmental plan. Uh, alongside that, we are also uh, concluding regulations on health and safety, uh, which have just gone to public participation, uh, so that we can have a, a regulatory framework that can guide the entire area of health and safety. So even as we progress to inspire the sector, I want to assure Kenyans that we are also cognizant of the fact that we need to take care of our environment. And the crucial role played by indigenous communities should not be underplayed. Their knowledge and stewardship are invaluable in safeguarding our natural heritage. Okay. So we do not say it's enough, but conservation is actually mostly done by communities. Organizations like ours and other international organizations really do not as much. What we do is to facilitate communities. Indigenous people and local communities are the custodians and guardians of nature and they need to be recognized for what and who they are. Um, they have a significant role. We can't move forward without them and they should be recognized. And their rights and participation and in decision making needs to be upheld strongly going forward. Governments need to create an enabling environment. It's, it's actually relatively easy on the one hand. On the other hand, it is challenging because governments make decisions. And when governments don't consult in decision making, things go wrong. Because it is about our survival. We cannot survive in this world alone. And by that, I mean all species, whether they be politicians or these or us. Mm -hmm. The important thing is here is, and I cannot stress this enough, don't be afraid to ask. I understand it can be extremely difficult because you have this, and that's why I said it's not an exclusive club. Wetlands, the vibrant habitats for various bird species and wildlife, must be preserved for the sake of our planet's biodiversity. Fortunately, hope shines through as technology now offers a way to harmonize infrastructure investment 
with the protection of rich biodiversity. On your running costs. And therefore, through the work that we are doing uh, and the mapping that we have done through multiple platforms, it provides, you know, the, 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 it provides this information available to these investors to be able to see that I can put my power plant in such a place with, minim, with, with the different type of impacts that it will accrue uh, for my investment and see whether I can make a judgment whether it is useful for me or not and profitable for me. So, uh, so overall as an investor, you take that into consideration. That ensures uh, profitability as well as um, you, you achieve profitability and uh, safeguard the safeguard nature nature benefits is what they need to look at. So, if you are doing power infrastructure, you do not want all the time to have uh, power cuts to maintain those power to, to power cuts or power you know power cuts as a result of an execution of, of birds or other animals because then it will be a cost for running that infrastructure. Africa boasts of an abundance of biodiversity, yet it reaps fewer benefits from nature. Nation states, especially northern uh, developed countries, need to provide the necessary resources to implement the global biodiversity agreements. That's critical. Currently, we have a significant shortfall. We need um, close to 80, $894 billion to deliver the GBF annually and we do not have that secured and that needs to be put into place. More conservation effort and collaboration from all stakeholders is needed to strike a delicate balance between human progress and the preservation of our planet's precious biodiversity. Research must become core business, a priority of government because without data, without information, without the ability to predict the future we then become at the mercy of crisis management. While in actual fact, if we collect data and information, we can be able to plan ahead. So, nationally we have uh, monitoring of migratory birds and led by Kenya Wildlife Service and National Museums of Kenya with civil society organizations like Nature Kenya. We have been monitoring migratory birds for a long time. Yes? And uh, every January, February, we do annual water bird counts together with government, and this data is shared with government. And every December, October, November, December period, we, there is a, a long term bringing what you call like monitoring of migratory birds within the Mulia landscape, which is coordinated by National Museums of Kenya, Arocha Kenya, and, National, and Kenya Wildlife Service together with, together with other partners like uh, Nature Kenya. So overall, we are doing monitoring. And the best way of doing monitoring is by tagging these birds and seeing if someone else can be able to recapture them in other, in other landscapes. Only indicators of what is happening in the landscape. Because you cannot tag all birds, you can only tag a few representatives. And therefore, having these species which, get, which interact with these power lines and recording them, we see that there is an overall impact on uh, on um, impact of power lines on birds. So like this bird which was studied in Poland is one of the case study that shows the, the detrimental impact of power lines within our landscape. So if you have six trillion dollars um, into nature, then Africa, Africa contributes roughly about two trillion dollars um, in terms of the value of the asset base. The second key statistics is the, the, um, the cost of um, conserving nature. It's significant in the sense that at the moment we need almost, like I said, um, $894 billion to conserve nature. Um, that's not easily and readily available. It, it normally comes from the northern countries, but all countries have a responsibility to put in that resource. Caroline Tomno, TV.